Hey everybody, welcome back to Geektopia Island. We're here with the new uh, Kevin's Creations. I'm your host, Kevin. And I'm Cardwell. And we're here doing a uh, fan fan request. Gil Ahamat, he who controls the taboo. This very brooding gentleman here. Yeah, the new, uh, the new white black starter from the Time Spinning Witch. He's all about his historicals, so. Cardo's here, well, we're gonna delve right into this dude and yeah, see what well, he does. Well, let's see why he needs some historic stuff in his life. Yeah, yeah, he does some things. Let's get there. Alright, so first off, we'll go over him. He's got Judgment for 5, White, Black, and 3, which is kind of rough, but I mean, he's a starter ruler, so that's gonna be big. Yeah. Uh, but he's got Energize for White and Black. But his fun abilities is you can pay the attribute cost of historicals of historical cards with, with will of any attribute. So, so as, you, as you know, we have almost all the colors here, besides blue, but you can just cast it with whatever you want because of the it. historical colors. There is technically blue in the sideboard, but he's historical, so there you great. Go. Done. Um, and then when you play a historical card, you put a fake counter on target non-magic stone entity you control. That's his front side. And he does stuff with the fake counters on his back side, so let's judge it and see yep, what he well, does. Flip over. Alright, so he turns into a 10-12 flyer, which is already pretty good uh, magic stones you control ta at gain tap at one mana of any attribute so any it's color still the same yeah pretty yeah. much um, instead of you getting to play dudes you get to add all, all the colors uh, you can pay one banish a resonator this dude gets swiftness imperishable or precision until the end of turn so that's pretty hot and yeah. it's open ended so you can do it multiple times you just have to sacrifice a duty and pay a mana each time um, and then his God's Art is Twist of Fate. He pays zero, destroy all non, destroy all other non-magic stone entities with no actual, with no fate counters on them, and then remove all fate counters from all permanents you control. Yeah. So late game, you can definitely get there. Yeah. Just make a safe board with all your fate counters, and then zero. Yeah. Done. So yeah, like like you're saying, you just late game make all the dudes. Yeah. And it's a uh, instant speed, so you wait till their turn if they want to play something. They, <laughs> yeah. You can. He, he's like a, uh, I mean, yes, that can be lorided, so just know that loride is the thing, but even still, it, it forces them to deal with it, because you can pop it at any time. Nice. But that's it, really, as far as what he does. Let's delve into what the deck does. All right. So, of course, we're getting in there as, as we can with Sacred Elf, one green. Uh, tap it to produce a, a green will. Yeah. This deck is mostly, like... The better historical dudes are pretty high in cost, so I wanted to build it more to get to them quicker. Yeah. So nice. And with that, we have a uh, Melfi here, cost two, and what she's really good. Yeah, Go she's a three six for two with quick cast. Um, she has one of any color when you she when after you can tap, um, and then when she if you have torrent or you played a second card this turn, she prevents damage dealt by target creature. So. Mm -hmm. You prevent damage dealt by their dude. And of course, uh, on the card, the old cards, it says two target, but they eroded it. Yeah, they so eroded it, so... It's by target it's by creature, target. which is way better. Yeah, you'll see the new one in the picture, so go ahead and check that guy out. Yeah. All right, this next one, how, what are we doing with her? All right, so that was actually it for all the regular dudes. Now we're into historical card, the historical resonators. Nice. And the first one I got is Rachel the from the deck. She is a 7-8 for 3 with... Uh, she does not have anything else other than yep. that, but she's there for the one, like, for the late game goodness. Because she taps, removes one of your resonators to bring back for another one from the graveyard to play. So. Which is really good. And it says it's another, not just her. So yeah. all your little dudes that served you very well, yeah. you can go ahead and get something better. So, I mean, like, if it's turn five or turn six and you have a dude in your graveyard from them discarding it and you really need that dude, you're like, get out of here, Sacred Elf. Let's turn you into a big dude. Great. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Next up, we got uh, the Kronos Researcher, Alasaris here. Yep. Cost three, May eight. Uh, when it comes, he's also his historic human. Enters the battlefield, remove the top card from your deck from the game, and you can play the removed area. It was like an extra card in your hand. Yeah. And your J Roller gains swiftness. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. He's not amazing, but I mostly needed him to draw an extra card. Like it, yeah. it gives you an extra card in your hand, in essence. Yeah. I mean, yes, they get to, they get knowledge of what it is, but if they don't kill it, 
you you essentially get a free card. Yeah. Uh, the next one is one of my favorites of the set, just because she's super good, and it's Viola the Treacherous Maiden. She's two mana quick, cast 6-6. Six, six. Um, when she comes into play, target J slash Resonator gains flying and becomes a dragon. Yep. And then you can sacrifice her to remove two cards from target her layer's graveyard. So, you're just like, cool, you're going to do something in the graveyard? No, get rid of that. Yeah, yeah. But she's got her own trick later on that we actually forgot about and didn't realize it happened until one of the one of our Viewers Islanders like, told us. So. Yeah. Thanks for looking out for us, and it's, it's actually quite amazing. We'll get to it. Yep, and it's in the stick, and we'll see it. Yeah. All right, you're telling me that this guy Blazer here is Dude, showing up a lot. He's everywhere, man. Go ahead and read him. All right, he costs four for an 8-8. Eight, eight. Eh, not too bad, right? So it has precision, which is I think is a great mechanic yeah. for th ever. When this card is a battlefield, look at the target opponent's hand. Choose a card. Uh, they discard that card and put a 1-1 one, one counter on him. So that's pretty good. You get a body and you remove a threat from their hand. Yeah, already pretty now, good. The next one, of course. You can remove that 1-1 one, one counter. And you get to choose one. Remove attacking J Resonator, battling this card from battle or... So, like, if they attack you or you block If they it. attack him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or cancel target spell or ability targeting this card. Yeah. So, so if they try to kill it, just remove it. Oh, he survives. Yeah. So he's he's there to protect himself. He can yeah. go steal a card from them, and then you use that counter you get. Because they don't get that card back. It's just they discard it. Yeah. And then you can protect him. He's yep. just good. And uh, with uh, Rachel... Sacrificing an elf for bring him back is just yeah, good. It, it's one of the other reasons she's there, just to be like, ah, let's keep looking at training. <laughs> All right. All right, the next dude. I I cannot believe they printed him on a card, really. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. It's it's that good, <laughs> in my opinion. So Jupiter, Warlock of the Woodstar. He's the big drop of the deck. Uh, he's five mana, quick cast. He's a 10-12 resonator. Um, when this card enters your field, you choose up to two. Cancel target chance spell. Uh, return up to return target resonator to his owner's hand. Rest or recover a resonator or draw a card. You get to choose two of those things. Yeah, so you get to choose two of whatever you want. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I've already seen it happen with me and my roommate that he's locked me out of a game by being like, uh, cancel your chant, bounce this dude to my hand. Oh, look, I'm going to do it again. Cancel your chant, bounce yep. this dude to my hand. Or bounce another one to your hand. And the thing is good about his other ability is a rest or recover. So if you are if you have lethal and you need to tap a dude, you're just like, play this dude, untap my other dude. Yeah. Swing again. So he's just... There's so much value for five mana. Yes, he costs, he's a little heavy, but well, in deck with mana ramp, yep. it's it, super be good. quick, yeah. And with Rachel, you can do it on that same turn too because you can just do it as an... Uh, you can do it to brew, or untap your own dude to swing. Yeah, so if they make you discard it, by turn three, their turn, she yeah. can activate. So yeah. you can suck an elf and bring it back and then do all that fun stuff. Yeah, uh, the only issue with Rachel is she only activates on your turn. That's the only bad part about her, but it's what it oh, is. Oh, okay, sad. So you have to wait yeah. one full turn. So you have to do it on your turn, but, I mean, it's a free draw card if she's in your graveyard and you untap a dude. Yeah. Or you can cancel a spell if they're trying to <laughs> cancel your own spell. Yeah. Um, and he is historical as well. And then the final historical card I run is Forbidden Arts. It is a white-black for a quick cast destroy target resonator. So this deck is mostly actually red, green, and red, green, and black. But this card is historical, so I can cast Castle. it for any color I need. Yep. That's really it's there. It's just kill a dude. You don't for even whatever I want. You don't even look at your stones. You just tap yeah. two things and like Thanks. kill that dude. Just kill, kill that dude. Quick. And that's, that's it for all the historicals that I have in the main board. I have some more in the sideboard, but we'll get to them. All right. Can you go ahead and call <laughs> this guy out? Cardo hates this card just because he can't say it right, but it's Unending Hatred. Because it looks like a W, and that's where my <laughs> mind goes. It's Winding Hatred, actually. Yeah. yeah. No, it's really not, but it's all right. I'll let you keep that. So a red and black quick cast, or not quick cast, I'm sorry. Y'all have seen this card plenty of times. Red, yeah. black, look at target player's hand. They remove a card from it that you choose, or destroy all one drops. Yep. All day, every day. Just good. I mean, if you're playing any kind of good control deck, this is that's red black. It's pretty hot. I mean, yeah, you lose a sacred elf, but oh, I don't care. Yeah. Great. And the next one, ruin story. You, everyone, well, you know, 
people are probably familiar with this card already. Yeah. Because it's used in another deck, but we'll get to it. Uh, black, green, quick cast. You get to choose one. Your opponent banishes a resonator. That's good. Uh, the second one we won't care about. <laughs> flip, flip over two revealed stories in your extra deck. Or put a target resonator from your graveyard in your hand, which is really good. Or cancel target spell unless your opponent pays one more. Yeah. Again, it's a value card. Yeah. Two mana. Choose one of three different options because one option is not valuable, valid for us. Yeah, and at instant speed. Yeah, but at an instant speed, you banish your resonator is game changing. Yeah. Oh, that that one big dude you wanted, great, it's dead. Yeah. And so. then I I buckled. I know. I'm playing a severing wins. <laughs> Don't hate me. <laughs> But I mean, it's just it's just good. It's one of the most horrible feelings when you're a deck brewer and you have to use a card that's just <laughs> yeah. good. You're like, it's just too good, you have to use it. Yeah, it hurts. Four mana quick cast, cancel target <laughs> chant, or cancel target spell, and it can be free if they play two spells this turn. Yep. It's just a good card. I'm not good at playing counter spells, so don't expect me to be a pro at it. <laughs> Never have liked playing counter spells, but I will if I need to. Yeah. All right. Next card is the card that I was telling you all about that is funny with Viola. Yeah, with this combination with Heaven, Sundering, Dragon, Palm. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's Kyrie. The... All right, so it's it's one of the battle arts for Kyrie. Um, it's one of the new ones from Time Spinning Witch. It didn't even occur to me that you can do this until one of the islanders told us yeah, about so it. And you. it's totally epic. So first ability, you choose up to you choose one. And if you awaken it, you can choose three, but I have no way to awaken it, yeah. so we're choosing one. You can either destroy a target dragon, you can either shoot a resonator for five, or you can shoot a player for four. Yeah. That so, first ability. Yeah, so the destroy target dragon. So Viola turns a dude into, or turns a J slash resonator into a dragon. And then the destroy, so you'd pay two mana, quick cast her in, your thing's a dragon. Yeah. One red mana. Your thing's dead. I did get to do this on Untapped and totally wrecked an AU player. <laughs> it was my that was my favorite thing to watch. Cause you just like the AU was just going crazy, discarding all the things. I was like getting the right, combo going. Cool. You're just like, okay, cool, cool, not scooping. Two mana, she's a dragon. And they were like, Well that's cool, great. And then I was like, kill a dragon. And <laughs> then I got to watch them die a little bit inside. <laughs> she, it, it just got the dot 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 what, that that can't happen, and I was like, it, it just did. Yeah. It's, it just says dragon. It doesn't say dragon resonator or J resonator. It's just dragon. So I definitely have to shout out to you for showing me that because I totally missed that, and it's totally awesome. Yeah. Which is All pretty, right, but that's it for that. Yeah. Uh, this seems like a good standard green card here. Uh, True Blade of Spirits, deal five to resonator, and then oh, a two or less. And then it has Remnant, so you can do it twice. Yeah, it's quick ass, because you're killing any two drop that you need to. I mean, yeah. it gets rid of all the little things. Like, a, they're a mana dork, get it out of my life. Yeah. It's and that's good. it, really, for the main deck. Um, it's got, it's mostly a control deck, and you're going, you're going late game, really, and you want to get to the bigger dudes like Blazer and Jupiter. Yeah. That was the whole goal of when I built this. You're going to have the historicals for, to trigger his fate counters, but that's kind of just an added bonus. You're not... Don't try to get his fate counters because too much stuff can go wrong right now. Yeah. Like the way the format is, it's too hard to, to worry too much about getting his energy, his uh, judgment going with his god art. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, Lorite's running rampant and that dude doesn't care about god's arts to, to help you. So. Yeah. But that's it, the main board. We'll go to the sideboard to see what we can add in. Um, so for the board, we have another Rachel against control against the late games you need to do more yeah um, another unending hatred Cardwell's favorite card oh yeah um, and then I have two last days of the powerless dragonoid it's the Those one green good. quick cast yeah uh, it's the story you cancel target fire chant or remove all counters from your opponent's J ruler so if they're playing any dude that uses counters like Shayla or Makage or Kirik, Kirik any of those I mean Fayers all of those you can remove all the counters from them. I mean, it's and a, and a, like a Raya, she thrives off of her mystery counters, and you just remove them. Thanks. Yeah. That's the biggest reason it's there, just to remove the counters if you need to get rid of that ruler. Um. All right, the next guy I got is the uh, blue historical Saturnius Enchanter of the Earth Star. 
Um, he's blue one and five for five seven. When he comes into the when he enters the field, put target non magic stone non J resonator entity your opponent controls on the bottom of its owner's deck. So put an addition on the bottom. Um, and then he's there to be like pay zero target J resonator you control gets plus O plus two until the end of turn. Play this ability only once per turn. He's there mostly to save your dudes. If they're playing heavy on the burn spells, you just like cool bring this dude in because. Hit. You can play him for any mana. Woo! Yay. And he helps save your dude. And if you have both of them, you can activate their ability once per dude. So, not too bad. It and helps. He has some angry octopus water squid thing. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, his, pretty... his art's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, the last historical I have is Venus, the Magus of the Metal Star, and I have four of them. Um, she's one mana for one white, two, two. And when it comes in the field, you choose one. Reveal any number of historical cards from your hand. Put X one encounters where X is the cards you reveal, or draw a card. So, I thought about putting her main board, but I wanted the the mana dorks more just to get to the late game. I felt like that was better for what I'm trying. But she's there in case you're running against aggro and you need a little dude, but your little dude will beat their little dude. She definitely gets to do that. Yeah. Um. Or if you just want a bigger, like another threat against a control deck, because you can play this for another threat. Because you have quite a few historical cards, and if you add all of these and the other historicals in, you're going to get at least probably a 5-5. Five five. Nice. Um, so that's that's her main purpose for being there. And then a card that nobody remembers, uh, Ultimate Swordmaster Faria, 4 mana, 9-9. Nine nine. She's one of the Will of Hope cards. Prevent the first damage that would be dealt to this card each turn, oh, yeah. and then prevent the first damage that would be dealt to you each turn. It's there for the aggro decks, like, because they're going to be coming in hard, and your deck is not okay with that. So you need the you need the help, the little buffer. Um, she's there, and she's so hard to deal with if she's in play. Good lord, because you have to deal double damage to her or just now kill her. But yeah. that's really it. Um, and with all the counter spells running about. Alhamut's Black Lightning. Two black, and it's a chant ancient magic. This card cannot be cancelled. Destroy target non-darkness resonator. If this card was awakened, put it in your owner's hand as it resolves. And it awakens for four. So for six mana, you continually have the kill spell. Nice. So if you get to six mana, you're just like, kill that, put this in my hand. Don't count don't counter it because you can't. Yeah. And then finally. Cardwell taught me my lesson. Yes. I don't know if y'all see him. Dust Girl is kind of annoying because of her imperishable. Oh yeah. And Imul has imperishable as well. So I put in Burn Descenders in the board. Two red quick cast. This card deals 700 damage to target J slash resonator. If, it, if it's a J ruler, it loses imperishable until the end of turn. If it's a resonator and would be put into the graveyard, remove it from the game instead. It's really there just to remove imperishable from a J ruler. Yep. Cause I can't. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> Believe me, I'm already trying to think of D counters. For Dust Girl's but... really annoying to deal with, cause she's just like, I don't care if you kill me, cause I'm just gonna do it again just next keep... turn. So if she starts getting popular in bigger tournaments, that's definitely yeah, it's a thing that needs to happen. It's definitely a sideboard card for any of the imperishable, get their cards. Yeah. Um, as for the stones, it's you're always guaranteed a green. The historical, like the stones that came with him, are just bad. Yeah. Just um, throw them out. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> they're just bad. Uh, but I got four of the red green stone, just the basic red green stone, four of the black green stone, and then two of the white green just so you can judgment. It, that way you have another way besides Melfi and his energized to actually judgment. Nice. Um, mostly you're going to be needing the red, green, and the black. That's the most colors you need. And luckily, like the biggest color is green. So, Especially I mean, early. like You always need a green yeah. turn one. And Melfi helps out a lot more than you think, because yes, there's a lot of kill spells, but most people are going to leave, like, they're going to have to leave Melfi alone usually, unless they really just want to kill her. Yeah. Which, I mean, once you do a couple Jupiters, they're probably going to kill her the next game, so just know that's going to happen. But, I mean, it gets a kill spell out of their hand. But that's, that's really the deck. Uh, we'll see what it does this weekend. It's going to be pretty fun to play. Yeah. It looks surprisingly powerful. Yeah. Like, I, they'll see your j roll and you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then it actually comes across pretty hard. Yeah, we'll see what it does, and we'll see how Alistair's fares and all of it. He's he's one of the cards I wasn't sure about, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. And you only have two in the deck, so uh, yeah. okay. 
All right, and with that, that is uh, Gil Ahmet, he who controls the taboo. The uh, deck list will be down below. Make sure you check that out. Um, if you have any concerns or comments, just link them down below, and we'll we'll get to them as quick as we can. Uh, appreciate y'all checking out our videos today, and hope y'all enjoyed this one. Spin Geektopia Island. Goodbye. All right, guys, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and also hit the bell that gets you notifications on all of our content. Also, if you need the latest deck tech, it's going to be to the right. And if you need the latest gameplay videos, it's going to be down below.